With the Graveyard Book, each chapter is also a story in itself. So I thought, why don't I go on the road and read a whole chapter? And then do a long Q&A, get people to write questions down on cards. I'll do 30 questions a night instead of four questions. And that's what I've been doing. And then the, the next bit of the idea was, well, if I'm going to do that, why don't we stream it? Why don't we put them up on the web? So right now we have the rather peculiar thing of, at the same time as we're selling the book, we're giving it away, a chapter at a time. What I love about that is that it creates something special. Everybody around the world can follow along with us. Everybody can, they can link to, they can embed the video on their website if they want, they can do what they like with it. I, I, and I love that. The idea of the Graveyard Book came to me when I was a very young man, when my son was almost two years old and we lived in a really tall house and he had a tricycle and he couldn't ride the tricycle around the house because he would have tumbled downstairs and died so and we didn't have a garden so i would take him across the lane to the little graveyard over the road and he would pedal his tricycle up and down the paths and between the graves and one day i looked at him and i thought you know he looks so at home and then i thought I should write a book that would be kind of like Kipling's The Jungle Book. And I thought, I'll do a story about a kid who wanders into a graveyard and is brought up by dead people and is taught all the things that dead people know. And that's really the graveyard book. Children tend to read the graveyard book as an exciting sort of book with a hero that they would love to be. Parents, I think, tend to read it essentially as a giant metaphor for childhood and the joy and the tragedy of parenthood. I don't think I'd realize that I'd made that work until people started phoning me up and saying they cried. I didn't know that I was writing a book about growing up when I started writing it. I just knew that my hero would have to grow up and that I would do a story every two years. But trying to find who he was at two year intervals was fascinating. Okay. What are you when you're four that you aren't when you're eight? What are you when you're six that you aren't when you're 12? When I look back at my childhood, the biggest difference between, you know, the, the childhood of kids today and the one that I had is mostly for the last 10 years, I've known where my children were. I got to just vanish a lot. Any time between the end of school and being home for dinner was mine. And I would wander these trespassing on vast, closed down country estates, which have now all been turned into housing estates, with these sort of giant manor houses, which were all locked up. If I couldn't sit and read, I wanted to just wander and explore. And I loved getting lost. One of my favorite books when I was little was Tales of the Norsemen, Tales of the, the Norse Gods, um, Tales of Ancient Egypt. By, by writers like Roger Lancel and Green. And their retellings of mythology, tales of Greece and Rome. And I'd read them, and I loved them. With the graveyard book, though, I really didn't want to go into an existing mythology. I thought it was much more fun to try and create mythologies, and to try and create a mythology of graveyards which felt right. You know, the ghouls aren't from any mythology. Um, there's probably a tiny dash of H.P. Lovecraft in them, but apart from that, they're just, they are their own thing. Whether or not kids will find this scary, I don't know. I hope not. I would much rather that the Graveyard Book acted as a kind of inoculation. I would love to make kids less scared of the world they're in. I would love to make them less scared of things like graveyards and the dead. Um, because one of the themes of the book is that the dead can't hurt you. They're dead. Living things can hurt you. Living people can hurt you. But the dead can't.